Well, the debt ceiling is approaching, and constitutional experts are weighing in on whether the president has the power to go around Congress and raise the ceiling himself. With me now from Miami is Elizabeth Price Foley. She's a professor of constitutional law at Florida International University. Professor, welcome. Good evening. How are you? So explain this debate here that's going on in the legal community. I, I read a couple of op-eds uh, recently about this. Uh, you say that the president doesn't have the power to raise the debt ceiling himself. That's right. And, and this point is absolutely crystal clear from a constitutional perspective. Uh, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution gives Congress the sole power to, quote, borrow money on the credit of the United States. Uh, and if you look in Article 2 of the Constitution, which defines the President's power, you'll see no power anywhere remotely close to the power to borrow money. So Congress has the power of the purse, and if the President chooses to disregard the debt ceiling established by Congress, he's acting unconstitutionally. Now, those who assert the President may unilaterally increase the debt ceiling rely on Section 4 of the 14th Amendment, which states, the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law shall not be questioned. And you say that doesn't apply. Yeah, it, it doesn't apply because what it says is the validity of the public debt shall not be questioned. The key word here being the word debt. And what debt means is what it means in a typical situation. It means situations where the United States is a debtor, is borrowing money from a creditor. And where that exists in the United States is, for example, uh, U.S. Treasury bonds, savings bonds, and other financial obligations. So the good news is that Section 4 of the 14th Amendment means that the United States constitutionally guarantees its debt, which is why we have such a great credit rating and always will. We cannot constitutionally default on our debt, but debt, again, has a narrow meaning. Now, let me just give you an idea of what this functionally means. Uh, the United States takes in about three trillion dollars every year in revenues from tax streams of various sorts and to service our public debt our bonds uh, it only takes about four hundred and twenty billion dollars uh, so we have about seven times more revenue coming in than is required to pay our public debt so we will not default on our debt we may not be able to pay some statutory obligations things like social security medicare and the like uh, but even then, after you take out the $420 billion in debt, we've got about $2.5 trillion coming in every year to pay obligations like Social Security and Medicare. All right, so I, I, we didn't bring in somebody else on the other side to talk about this, but you want to uh, venture a guess on, on why it is they believe that President Obama has the constitutional authority to do this? Yeah, it's an interesting question. What I've seen uh, written thus far in scholarly circles is uh, this argument that somehow debt includes obligations like statutory obligations to pay Social Security and Medicare. Um, but to be frank with you, I don't see how anyone can make that argument because if you look at the text of Section 4 of the 14th Amendment, uh, the, the later part of it, the part after the one that you quoted, makes a clear distinction between debts and obligations and claims. Those are clearly distinct things and they mean distinct uh, 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 specific legal things. So debt in, is debt uh, and there's really no other uh, good argument for slicing it otherwise. So again, the good news is we're not going to default on our debt. We just had a report from Moody's come out on Monday uh, saying that exact same thing, that they don't expect either the, the failure to pass a, a continuing resolution or the failure of Congress to raise the debt ceiling to in any way affect uh, the credit rating of the United States. The only way it would is if the President somehow takes a crazy position that he is in fact not going to pay the bonds, the actual debt of the United States, which would be absolutely insane. Well, it's an interesting discussion. Elizabeth Price Foley is in Miami for us tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good to talk with you. Thanks for having me.